So this is the, uh, we have some here for, do you have business questions for me? Or are you here for the? Um, well, I brought some of the um, note cards that I've made of our Fort Jackson Park. Mm -hmm. And we are in the process of trying to develop it more. And our beautiful spot in the water. We also have some camping available. Why don't, why don't I start out? I can tell you a little bit about myself, and then I want to hear your your feedback on uh, on issues. And um, I, I call this my uh, my homework uh, session. I I like to get out and hear what constituents of mine uh, what's a, what are their concerns, and we take that. Molly is my chief of staff back there, and she'll be taking notes throughout. And uh, we go back and do our homework, and hopefully we uh, can address your concerns. And, uh, help out with that. Um, I'll get started. I am Billy Jones. I'm your new assembly uh, member from the 115th district, which covers your town and, and three other towns here in St. Lawrence County. Uh, also covers all of Franklin, your neighbor, and uh, all of Clinton counties. I, a little brief background about myself. I was, uh, I was raised in Chattagay, New York. I lived there my whole life. Um, raised on a dairy farm there and actually operated our family dairy farm um, for a number of years after I graduated from school. And then I went into uh, the Department of Corrections uh, and spent 20 years there. And along the way, I, uh, I uh, started out uh, in local government. I was elected our village mayor uh, back in 2009. And um, I always tell anybody that wants to get involved in uh, on the state or federal level in politics, they ought to start on the local level because that's where you that's where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. You uh, you really find out a lot about constituent concerns, and it's quite an education. You can learn about uh, wastewater treatment plants and uh, water systems and roads and bridges and your neighbor's cats and dogs and all the concerns uh, in between. So I always I, I feel that experience uh, has helped me uh, to get where I am. Uh, then I was elected to the Franklin County Legislature in 2011. Spent six years there, and then my colleagues uh, gave me the honor of being the chair of that board for the past four years before I decided to run for this office. And on uh, November 8th, I was uh, I was elected to uh, to the assembly. Um, January 1st, I started. November 8th was a, was my birthday, so I guess I got my birthday wish. Mm -hmm. So on January 1st, I officially started. Um, uh, at the state uh, state assembly, and uh, we started session. And right now, we're um, we've been in session for a couple of months, uh, off and on. I'm on break right now. That's why I'm doing a, a district tour. And I always feel it's important to get around uh, uh, to find out what uh, the concerns are of of uh, people in the district. Uh, this this is what I I feel is is important. Not that they work we do in Albany is unimportant, of course it is important, but I feel it's very important to get here, uh, get around in the district and find out and talk to people, find out their concerns. Um, right now is budget season, we have to adopt a budget, or we are supposed to adopt a budget by April 1st, so uh, when we get back from the break it'll be, uh, it'll be the last couple of days of February, March, mostly uh, I'll be in Albany that whole month. Um, and dealing with the budget. What happens in the budget process, some of you may know already, the governor proposes his budget in the middle of January by law. He has to have it out by January 17th, I believe. And then um, us in the Assembly and the Senate, they make amendments to his budget. It's his budget, we make amendments, we, we, find, we try to find common ground and we change the things in there, what we want. Um, I'm selfish in that process because I want what is best for us here in the North Country and I want things in there that are best for my district, the 115th district, so that's what, that's what I fight for. Uh, there's other issues uh, involved. One of, the, one of the bigger issues uh, that at least I mentioned in the top couple of issues um, that are, that we get a lot of, uh, a lot of phone calls on are, are the education portion of the budget. Education takes up a lot of our, of our budget. It is a $152 billion budget. $100 billion of that approximately is state operations, and then $25 billion of that is, is, is for education. The governor has proposed a billion dollar increase in that, um, and there's but only 
four hundred and fifty million of that is um, is for um, for foundation aid, which goes to our local schools. So we're trying to increase that because uh, the foundation aid has uh, you know kind of been lacking to our to our local schools in the past uh, couple of years. There's a discrepancy between the uh, the legislature and the uh, governor on on where what number, but uh, we feel there's uh, four to four and a half billion dollars left out there that are owed to our local schools. So that's an important part of it. Tuition free, I know, is a big subject. I mentioned that because the top one or two or three phone calls from our constituents we get relates to that. Their feelings on that. That's all over the board, um, how people feel on it. Um, the governor did put out there a $162 million uh, tuition free. It only goes towards tuition in SUNY schools uh, proposal. Um, I feel that there could be some modification on that uh, because, um, it, you know, your private schools, they we're hearing from them. I have a private school in my district, Paul Smith's College, um, that um, thinks that proposal will hurt their institution. Um, I think there could have maybe been some reworking on, on, on increasing our TAP or tuition assistance program um, to accommodate uh, students, more students, and uh, maybe give them a, a, a better choice. But I will give him uh, credit for bringing this, bringing the, the. Uh, bringing conversation around that. I feel that we need to help our students and our families with the crushing student debt that they're under also. Um, I don't feel that any uh, person starting out, uh, you know, any young person starting out should have to mortgage their future just to get an opportunity for a good paying job. So there's, there's, there's a lot of different, different uh, angles to that and uh, we're going to work it out and, uh, and see. Uh, uh, various other issues that are uh, that are in the budget, some decreases that I don't like uh, because they go to programs that are very important to uh, people here uh, in our district. Um, but we're, we're working on it. It is a work on pro in progress. Um, we have the next 30 uh, four five days to uh, come up with a state budget and it's very important that we get a budget in place by April 1st important to our agencies, gives them directions, important to our local governments. They'll, uh, they know they can chart out their course also, and uh, it's, it is important. Uh, it's important to me because I don't get paid after April 1st if uh, we don't come up with a state budget. <laughs> so, um, they didn't tell me that when I was running. Anyway, I'm joking. But um, it, is, it is important that we have a, an on-time budget, and we'll be going through various um, you know, budget negotiations and there's hearings and everything going on right now between the, you know, the Senate and the Assembly and then uh, and the governor. But it is it is important to point out that it is the governor's budget. He has a lot of control of this budget. Um, we uh, we have given him that control in this state for the past uh, uh, several years. Um, but I feel that our 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 voice uh, will be and should be heard in the process as well. Like I said, I'm very selfish when it comes to that because uh, uh, I want what's best for uh, the 115th district and the North Country here. So we'll keep fighting for it. So I'd like to just open it up. You feel comfortable stating your name, or um, if not, that's fine as well. If you want to uh, state some of your concerns to me, um, please do so, and uh, I'd like to hear from it. Like I said, this is Molly. This is my chief of staff. Um, and she'll be taking notes over there. Also, um, I just want to tell you that I want to represent you the best way that I can, and I want to be the most accessible uh, state representative that you've had. I know those are big shoes to fill because we've had some very great state representation and great state representatives, but I want to be as accessible as I can possibly be to you. So anytime that you want to uh, email us, email me, um, you know, get a hold of us via social media. We have plenty of, of, of outreach uh, of programs out there, or outreach, outreach places you can get a hold of us. Call our office, call me, 
drop a letter in the mail. I know that seems antiquated to some of our younger uh, people out there, but uh, however you feel comfortable getting a hold of us, please do. We want to be accessible to you and listen to you because uh, that's very important to me. So, I have a question. Sure. Uh, what do you intend to do with the results of question number 10? Do you support restricted immigration based on religion or nationality? Have you had any discussions about locating refugees anywhere in the no, 115? Not, not in my district, no, no, no. And I don't believe there are. There's an there's there's issue right now at the, uh, at the Champlain border um, where um, Refugees, immigrants are going across to, uh, the border right now to, I think, to try to get into Canada. Um, but we don't have any right now. It was more just a, you know, information for for us, on, uh, for me, on how uh, how the uh, how residents here feel about that. Okay. I know you know it's mostly a federal issue. Yes, um, it is. But uh, I was we, just curious if something was going to happen. In the 115, not that like I'm aware like of. happened in Rutland, Vermont. Yeah, not that I'm aware. Of. Okay. We had no no discussion. Okay. And yes, there is. It's a very good point. There's a survey out there that you've all received in the mail. You're probably sick of getting mail from me this? or any campaign after last fall. But that is that that's how we that's how we get information um, from uh, our residents, and it's, it's important to me to know how you feel about certain subjects. So that's why we put that out. My name's Luke Martin. Hi, sir. Uh, I live in the town of Parrysville, but there's a wind project uh, between Hopkins Town and Parrysville, mm -hmm. and uh, we're concerned about the effects of that wind uh, project. Mm -hmm. um, there's health concerns, there's setback concerns, uh, there's concerns about the evolved eagles, um, and uh, we understand that the state has is has a lot of say in what happens with this with the Article 10 siting board, and uh, it's nice if uh, you were aware that we were concerned about that. There's probably the majority of the people are not for it. There's a few people that are for it, but not very many. Okay. The Article 10 is uh, taking the local, taking in the state they, control. They, there's five members of the Article 10 siting board that are chosen by the state. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of them comes from the assembly. Yeah, we, we usually only. And, uh, and two of them are local. And, but the, yeah. the idea is those people decide what, what goes and what doesn't go. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, 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 my understanding is even the local law, they can overrule that if they yeah. choose to. Yeah, I, I, I believe in local control, I always have uh, local government. I do know about the wind uh, turbine issue. I am from Chattagay. We have had a couple of uh, large wind farms there. I have one that I walk out of my house and I look directly at. Um, but I feel that is a local issue. I don't feel that uh, you know the state should come in and tell what, what should happen there. That's just my my personal opinion. I guess you're asking about it, so I think it should well, it right. should stay in local control. Glad that's your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Luke Daly. Sure. I'm also from you? the other side of the line from yep. Parishville, but yep. this this proposed wind project will affect both communities very much so, as mm -hmm. you can see. Um, it's already creating a lot of um, divisiveness. Um, we feel that a few large landowners are the ones that are going to profit, and the rest of us are going to suffer. Mm -hmm. And we brought you lots of material about it, um, and we're really concerned about the Article 10, as you've mentioned, mm -hmm. because if we can't control what goes on in our own communities, what is the point? I mean, we might as well move to another state, another country, whatever. There's one right up there. 
We could walk there if we had enough time, right? Where's that one set? Oh, okay. Well, um, there's a lot of attention right there, right? Yeah, I don't know. If yeah, they might not want us, too. Um, but the thing is, is that we really don't feel like um, it's right that a few people, a few landowners, can sway a whole town's decision and that the state backs them up for some you know, nebulous, you know, uh, renewable energy goal that can't be met with this kind of power. I mean, there's a lot, we've given you so much information that shows it's not that efficient. And there's all kinds, it eats up a lot of land uh, between the transmission and things like that. The company has used, has come in and waved money in front of people before they ever had permission to come. There's been very little information given to the public. And we've done the best we can with, you know, crazy copier machines and going door to door, slogging through mud, and we're, we just don't know if we're making any progress, but we're really terrified. And that's the truth. Many of us came from other places. People that were born here want to stay. And we don't think that this is going to be good for our community. Ready, Cindy, or Hi, Cindy. Hi. We met briefly outside. Cindy Niles. I have a business in Winthrop, which is out of your district. Yeah. I wish you were in our district. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a deputy historian for the town, too. And one of my concerns was our beautiful park in Fort Jackson, developing okay. it so that more people can come and use it, okay. still keeping it for us, mm -hmm. but making it available to more. Um, and I brought you some uh, sure. note cards with a lot yep. of photos of yep. what we've taken of it. Um, another thing I, I wanted to ask about was there's a program Messina has used called Main Street New York. Okay. And it helps storefronts. Um, I'd like to be able to find out more about the monies available. Okay. I did talk to our supervisor in Stockholm, and they're busy building a new town hall. So yeah. he pretty much said you find out. And Tell me about Let it. Me know. <laughs> but there were monies. There were two places in Messina, a bar and a Del Mar bar and a Mystic Ray canning salon that got from storefront. It's supposed to help the towns by making handicapped accessible mm -hmm. things for the businesses. Just hoping we can find some more information okay. out for the we'll town. We'll yep. get you that. Yeah. They've done a nice job in Messina. Um, and businesses up here too really need more networking, mm -hmm. more advertising. It's expensive for most of us, even though I'm in another town. We've started a think tank with some small businesses around the town um, through a business in uh, Brazier called Two Mama Birds. Okay. They're really good at marketing. They're actually a jewelry business, started at home. And she started to include Potsdam, Hopkinton, uh, Messina, all the Tri-Town area businesses. Mm -hmm. So we're all trying to help each other. but. We need more networking. Sure. Anybody's going to survive. Mm -hmm. so. It's tough to be a small business. And that's what New York's made of. Yeah, anyway. exactly. So. I agree. Okay. We'll get you some information on, on that. Um, there, there are various programs uh, that, that do deal with that. Um, specifically, we can get you some more information <coughs> that, that would help in that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there was some programs that the town could actually the town applies for it, yeah. and then and then they they set up to to disperse that money, the storefront, the the, mm -hmm. the revitalization uh, uh, grant that we did it in Chattagay a number of years ago. So it, there are resources out there to do that. So we can I get know. you some information on that. Great. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Hello, sir. Hi, good morning. I'll stand over here, sir. Sure. Um, my name is Bob Emmett. Hi, Bob. And, um, thank you for coming out here and touching base with, with us and kind of hearing the pulse of what's going on okay. here, supporting our local <coughs> government. Um, it's not just about us. I'm, I'm kind of on the uh, opposition side of the fence regarding the, um, uh, the wind farm issue. Um, I direct a year on Christian Camp and Retreat Center in Hopkinton, just about 
two miles from here. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been doing that since 1974. So on an annual basis, we get between 750 and 1,000 users who come to our, our facility. Mm -hmm. So I'm not just speaking on behalf of myself, but the people who come from local communities to benefit from a, a camp, youth camp, and retreat experience for both sure. children and adults. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think people come with an expectation of what they're going to get out of that experience. Now, to say that it, it can't be received in the middle of a, a wind farm, I don't know what the impact would be, but I, I don't think it would be advantageous. You know, it's like the way I like it is like you're going on vacation and you have a you have an expectation of what that experience is going to offer you. And um, I think um, being surrounded by the, the wind turbines and you know, I visited one of our sister camps in Bliss, New York, which is in the southern tier, and, and they operate in, in the shadows, basically, of a wind farm. And since you're from Shattergate, you, know, you understand what that's like. Mm -hmm. um, and I tried to picture that here in our community. And, and we have neighbors whose land adjoins ours um, quite a bit. Of course, I don't know where these turbines potentially would be placed, but it could be close by. Um, and we use every bit of our 211 acres to take kids on and do pioneer camp experiences and stuff like that. So it's a concern to me, both for health and safety, but just for the aesthetics. I, I think it potentially could detract from what people are coming to our community. Um, from my personal perspective, um, as a camp director, um, that would detract, and, and, uh, again, how can I measure that? I don't really know. Okay. I can only see it from my experience of 30 plus years in, in camp ministry and, and how that affects me and I would think would also carry over to people who are looking for that getaway set apart experience so I just want to, I've shared that with the, with the board and on the survey and I'm sure that I'm being heard you know I, I have no question about that and some of these folks know our facility and they've been there for different reasons um, both good and bad so but anyway thank you again for coming in here Thank you. Yes, sir. I'm Moses Hilder from Parishville. I'm, we're also concerned about the wind farm being in this area. Um, I'm here to represent the Amish community. We started this community in 2004, and now we have 45 families. Do you see that potential of tripling in the next 15 years? We do buy abandoned farmland, bring it back to life. We're, however, we're not the only ones. Other people do that as well. But we have bought, in 2004, we have bought um, quite a few abandoned farms, brought them back into uh, production in agriculture, mm -hmm. and as you know, thank you for um, doing that. I just do it in my, <laughs> my my area as well. <laughs> um, agriculture is the backbone of a prosperous community, um, and I see the wind farm as a threat to that because people will probably try to hang on to their land, at least in wind farms. And then, if you visit some of the wind farms, not say all of them, but some of the wind farms do grow up abandoned again. Um, I mean, as far as the agriculture part of it. So we're also concerned of the health of our ourselves, our neighbors, and everybody, the whole community, and the local environment. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I thought you had your hand. I, I did earlier. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Um, my name is Lori Witherall. Hi, I Lori. also live in the town of Parrishville, but um, lived here for many years of my life prior to moving there. Um, I'm concerned about the, the wind farm too. I'm concerned about my property losing half of its value. And I'm I'm worried about people not coming into the community to build here because they don't want to be surrounded by wind turbines. We have spoken to people in Chattagay who are devastated by the second phase of that um, construction there and have nowhere to turn. Nobody will buy their property. That's one of our biggest investments mm -hmm. um, when we build a home or buy a home. That's our single largest investment, and we're looking at losing up to half of it, depending on how many turbines are around us. And people think that it's going to help financially, but we have been doing research since August that proves otherwise. And it, there's lower crop yields because of the, the bats that are killed. There's there's um, 
so there's some more stillborn births in domestic animals like cows, sheep, pigs. I mean, there's so many negative things, aspects to it. But there's a handful of people, you know, that say they're doing it for green energy, and it's not green. It's not renewable. If you want to have a project for green energy, then do solar. Mm -hmm. Because that, you know, but, but with the governor offering all these subsidies, I mean, when you were talking about the budget, it's like, if you want money for education, and you want money for programs, get rid of the subsidies. You won't see another wind farm built if those subsidies aren't there. I mean, Warren Buffett was quoted as saying, the only thing, the only reason wind farms make sense is because of the state and federal subsidies. If those are gone, they're not worth anything. And now we're talking about 14,000 abandoned turbines right now in this country that are still standing, but every single wind company says, oh, we have a plan for decommissioning but they walk away time after time and leave them rotting and rusting and a piece of junk. I mean, it's ruining, ruining our country. And cement, that's one of the worst things you can do as far as the footprint. Um, and, and there's just tons and tons of cement that's just left in the ground. I mean, how can you do that to this country? I don't understand. I just don't. Can I? Bottom, I'll make it short and sweet. I'm not much of a talker. Okay. Bottom line is we don't want to win those. Okay. Is there anything you can do about it? Like I said, I, I firmly believe that's local control. The gentleman over there said, uh, talked about Article 10. Yeah. I don't want to put anything on your town board, but I'd imagine they're going to vote on a, uh, or discuss what's going on on, on that. So. That is it. As far as that, I do believe in local control. That's what I do. I do. I'll tell you, we don't want it. If you can do something, we'll remember okay. something. That's okay. for sure. Can I ask a question about internet access in the town? Mm -hmm. How is that? Depending on where you are located, mm -hmm. we have it through um, Nickelville Phone has it, and um, Time Warner Cable is now. Spectrum, spectrum. Yeah. Yes. but they don't go to that. As I told, as I called them, charter the last three stops <laughs> I was at for Spectrum now. Yeah. But they don't go out to the side roads, so and it's the last mile, so to speak. That's what they, they right. Call. Like uh, we've got side roads that they don't have the internet access. I mean, I think Nickelville's working on get it, yeah. getting it to them, but because Time Warner does service a bigger portion than. Not as so you have Time Warner and, and Slick. Slick. Yes. Slick. Yeah. The other problem we have is that Slick is installing fiber optic, but they're on that grant program where they're supposed yeah. to be hitting roads that Time Warner is not at. So those of us that are on major roads, we can't have access to that fiber optic because Time Warner because already offers. Right. Oh, because they have the, the, um, the franchise, franchise the agreement. Yes. yes. So we, we don't really have, have a choice. We're stuck with, you know, on these major roads, we're stuck with Time Warner, which is actually slower than the fiber optic. So, and it's cutting back. Even, and more expensive. Even local businesses that want, um, or potential local businesses that might want the faster yeah. internet speed can't get it because Time Warner doesn't offer it. And, um, you know, Slick has it running right down the major road, but he can't offer it to us. So, that's. Is Slick little getting little. out into the. Into the into certain areas, outlying areas. areas, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does everybody here have internet service? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it good internet <laughs> service? Can I ask that? I yeah. it's good. It's like we live. We live in an isolated area. I live a half a mile off of the main highway. And I have Slick, and the internet service is really outstanding as it far is. as I'm, I'm concerned. Okay. With Slick. Now, Time Warner, I, my son works in a business in Potsdam, and they're constantly having problems with Time Warner. I know that was a big thing with, with the Attorney General, I, you know, that they're, they're out to get, you know, get it, whatever, but 
it uh, like I said, Slick is Slick has done their job as right. far as I'm concerned. Good, glad to hear that. No, we have electricity. You don't have electricity? Okay. <laughs> well, I, I just feel that... Well, I've got 12 volts. <laughs> 12 and a half on a good day. <laughs> I, I, I just feel that we, you know, that we need good internet service um, mm -hmm. for, for our residents. I think it's a... Uh, it's because I've gone around to the town halls and finding out what we can do to, to increase that. Um, the governor does have a have a proposal out there where he's going to have internet for all by the end of 2018. Um, it's a rather aggressive uh, goal, but it's, uh, it's it's something that we're we're, we're working towards. Um, our school children need it. I mean, they they're they're at a competitive disadvantage not having it. I feel it's more or less a utility now and not a, a luxury. Our small businesses uh, need it to be competitive in the, in the 21st century economy, so I'm a big proponent of getting uh, good internet access and broadband access to our, to our residents. Um, we, I feel that we, we do need that. Uh, people always wonder how we can be more competitive uh, small business in the north <coughs> I think having that access and having that technology will make us uh, more competitive. Well, in terms of that, the Article 10 process, in order to make comments or to become uh, an intervener or an interested party, they are um, they insist that you go on the internet mm -hmm. and that cuts a lot of us out. Yep. And it's not, it should not be part of that process. There should be alternative even people that have tried to go on the internet to get it get knocked off. It's the time's too slow. Uh, it gets kicked back. Okay. There's well, a lot of problems. And that Article 10 is what's making towns afraid to step up and protect their people. It's this Article 10 process because the local representatives don't even get a vote. Mm -hmm. It's Great. the head of the DEC, health department, um, and uh, the Department of Public Services, and then two others. I'm not sure who. I don't know. Senate and the Assembly. Yeah. Senate and the Assembly. So that's five. Yeah. And those are the five that decide what's going to happen here, 200, <laughs> 250, 300 miles away from all of them. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's not right. And that's what I've always been proud that New York was a place where people had a voice, where you didn't have big industries coming in and telling you what to do. I lived in Alaska, and I was there when they built the pipeline. Uh, and I've seen the damage that can be done by one of these big projects, but the biggest damage is the loss of local control. And I've seen, this is one thing that we brought in to show you is that 40% of county bridges are deficient, 70% of county roads have sub-base deficiencies, and 30% of those roads have major deficiencies. You've seen in your town how these projects just tear the tar out of the roads, right? <coughs> and they say they're going to come and put it back, but they're only going to put it back to 30%, 70%, 30%. They're not going to do above and beyond. Our roads are in good shape. We've just gotten fixed up through hard work by our highway superintendents, by people putting in for the CHIPS grants and things mm -hmm. like that. And we do not want to see them go back to gravel like I've seen. I've seen them down where they're just ruts. And, and it tears the shit. The stuff out of cars too, you know. So that's really important too. Is the damage, the construction damage that's done. Six jobs. That's what they're promising us long term. We've got a cabinet shop down the road that gets five jobs, <coughs> and they they're not carrying us, carrying the heck out of our towns. You hardly even notice they're there. The people are working there every day, year round, and you know it's it's our taxes. It's our own taxes that are subsidizing these wind companies that take the money off. And they say that we've got, per they've got per total control over those turbines. We have a fellow on a video that we'll show you if you're willing, who's from Chattagay and can't live in his home. He can't sleep. He's being pounded by the vibration and the noise from four turbines that are within a half mile of his house. 
and he's a school teacher. I mean, you can't get up in the morning after you haven't slept and go and teach the kids. And there's other things where kids can't learn after they can't get sleep. And in your packet is a story from some people from Vermont that just abandoned their home. They couldn't live there. Their kids couldn't sleep. Once they moved away, it got okay. So we're, it's not that we're against green power by any means. As you can see, a lot of us live off grid. We've got solar. We've tried wind and little small wind turbines. And, you know, that's not the issue. It's industrial wind companies. And it's industrial companies that say they'll control it. And that's the story that keeps coming up. Ontario, Massachusetts, Vermont, and New York, where they try to complain. The company doesn't do anything, and the people protecting them supposedly don't do anything. Their, their pleas fall on deaf ears. So that's why we're so wild up here, working so hard to try to stop this thing <coughs> before we're stuck with it. Let me ask you, let me ask you a quick question. Sure. You say you walk out your door and you're looking right at one. Mm -hmm. You like it? Or is that good for you? Or? It really doesn't have an effect on me. It doesn't? Yeah. So it doesn't bother you? you Not you yet. Yeah. Until you get to sell your property, right? What's that? Until you get to sell your I property. I'm right? selling them, but uh, wow. <laughs> you know, I'll let you know then. <laughs> no, I'm being honest with you. I, you know, it, it, not yet, but it... It may, you know. potentially, if you had to sell it or for some odd reason. I, 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 I live in... Uh, town pot stand my properties on the edge, but mm -hmm. um, it directly affects me because, like David is saying, uh, it's subsidized by my tax dollars. Mm -hmm. I used to be very pro wind uh, years ago, and I I've, I've, I started in on an alternative energy program at City uh, Canton. Uh, I discontinued it after a year, but the point being is uh, it's not as green, like they've been saying, as it supposedly was. And I, I stand on the outside looking in at Parishville Hopkinton, and I've seen what's done in the other communities, and it is very divisive, it's dividing these communities. And then uh, St. Lawrence County, they want to, they, they push tourism, they push the Adirondacks. We live at the foothills of the Adirondacks, and it's going to destroy any type of tourism that they're trying to build up. And then the other thing, Parishville. It's not the end all be all to these wind these multinational corporations. These wind turbines are being built out of out of the country. Uh, the multinational corporation, the Spanish Ibadrola, they're the ones a foreign entity is the one deriving all the benefits. A few people here in their they've grown up here a generation, they're not deriving a few people are deriving benefits, but not the majority. So it, it's just bad for everybody and they're going to keep pushing all the way down to through into Fort Drum down around that area Blue Island they're pushing it the whole way down through the Adirondack foothills so you have the power to help us out here in some small way and you should be helping these people helping us all so, anyway. I also believe in local control um, Local voice has lots of power, but being you're the assemblyman for this district, mm -hmm. you're part of the local control. Mm -hmm. Please help. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Have you had any experience with this Article 10? Have I? No, I only know what. The, only know the, what it. What it what it entails. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm just curious to see if what they what they would do if if the board says. No, we don't want it. We vote it down. I, I know that the um, wind development company can take us to court and fight it, but I'm just wondering where this article can, if you have any experience mm -hmm. in what they, mm -hmm. what they look for. No, I, I don't really know. I know that. I know that it's trying to, you know, the article ten is trying to convey state, right, state control, um, so to speak. But as far as if uh, you voted it down locally. I don't know what the what the, what, know, what the, the, what the ramifications are. Um, from what I have seen in my in my own neighborhood, when they when the local board or whatever has said no, they haven't come. I mean, 
Burke, New York, they said no. Mm -hmm. They didn't come. Um, Kate Vincent, they said no. They haven't come. So that's what, <laughs> you know. And that's I just like to add that it would go a long yeah. way um, to mm -hmm. respecting the wishes of your constituents. If you, I mean, you did a survey. I've read all of the comments, even some of the comments that were neutral really seemed to be more negative. Even the ones that were poor seems like it still had hard that had, had negative. Yeah. So that tells you right there, and you're elected to represent the people of this community. So I think that that's, that's how you have to respond. I think you need a moratorium. I think you need a stronger win law. And I think you need to show that you're willing to defend our rights. Okay, I am all for renewable energy, okay? And there's a couple things that I really, first of all, wind power, the way it is, is not renewable. And where they want to situate it is in the middle between two roads and other roads, right? That's very close to houses. And if you start doing your research, people who live close to it move out, okay? So that's a lot of our kids too, children from the school. You move out even 5% of the families and take those kids away. Then we are looking at a school problem. We're looking now at a tax problem. And it becomes monsters in the sky. According to what I have read, and it could be wrong, that these wind turbines are only good for 10 years before they have to be re resurfaced or whatever. So therefore we've got all these things in the sky and they aren't going to take them down. If I were the company, I would push to get it in immediately because the subsidies are there. Even a moratorium where we can think about it is important at this point because they lose a little bit too. And right now they could even set up an office to think because they are so sure we're going to vote for it. And as far as you know, the state telling us what to do. Maybe it's time we stood up to the state and said, well, just a minute. These people don't want it. Let's look at what the people want. And I'm all for renewable energy. I would even be on a committee to look at solar energy because I've done a lot of research now. And instead of being retroactive, let's be proactive and say, look, maybe this is the way to go. And I hate sitting on any committee. But I, I am one of, one of those. This is the second town I have lived in where this company has come in, basically behind everyone's back, got the board, got certain people on their side, and then is brought to the town. This is the second town that this particular company that I have, that I have lived in that has come in and tried to split the town and try to put in these industrial turbines. They're not green, they're not energy efficient, they're only here because, the, you probably have known, I've already mentioned, they shop for subsidies. They get, they're getting from New York State and from the federal government subsidies for this project. There's a loophole in the IRS because the production tax credit is supposed to reduce by 20% until it's gone starting this year. There's a loophole in the IRS that says that as long as they started to order material for the project, even if the project does not even is on, on board yet, not online, not on applications anywhere, as long as they've ordered things for the project, they can still get their full protection, protection or production tax credit. So they're only here because they're trying to get this through before that is gone. When they when the when the subsidy is reduced and we're gone, they left here. They're, they came back when the subsidies come back. New York State has now added even more subsidies to them. So, and to help pay for those subsidies, on all of our uh, electrical bills, there are mm -hmm. surcharges. Mm -hmm. Those surcharges are what goes to NYSERDA to pay for these. So we as taxpayers are paying twice, three times, and going again and again. So New York State can really stop what these large companies are doing to us by stopping the subsidies. And you have the power to help that. And here's some more information on the subsidies. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else have any concerns? What's that called? 
agenda 20, 2030. 2030. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a big thing. You should look at it. Okay. It's a, uh, what was it? Was it just New York State in 2050 was no, the other no, one? No, no, it's worldwide. nationwide, worldwide. Nationwide. It's, uh, it's a, uh, someone's, someone's thought that we should move everybody into cities yeah. so they can be better organized it's, and managed. It's formally Agenda 21. Mm -hmm. What's that? It sorry. is formally Agenda 21. Okay. They changed the name to 2030. 2030. Okay. Basically, the, what's behind it is, I think it was in 92, when that first summit was, that came up with the Agenda 21. The, the gist of it is, if we would stop burning carbon fuels, there are too many people in this world. So as part of their agenda is to reduce the population of the world by six billion. And uh, it, it's some green fanatics that are behind this whole thing. And they, they want to get this so we're not burning any carbon fuels. Now we have lots of carbon fuels too, right? but they don't want to do that. That's considered like, uh, you know, it's going to run out. Many times now it's going to run out and then all these people are going to starve to death because there's no, you know, freeze and whatever. It, it's not real, but that's what's behind that whole program. And about half of the world is signed on to that thing. Now, New York's version is 2030. I don't know if that goes further than that or not. That's that's the the you say the uh, the motive behind this whole thing. The motive behind it behind the, all this alternative energy okay. movement. I'm from a, a past the state even, but the state's involved in it. But the United Nations is, is a big player in this thing. They want to, you know, they want to be responsible for the world's uh, uh, sustainability, what mm -hmm. they're talking about. Uh, but, you know, who wants to volunteer? to help reduce this population. I don't really want to. I, I don't think I do <laughs> It sounds very far-fetched, but if you investigate it, it's pretty scary. I have a question for you. You say you want to keep your offer local control. Mm -hmm. What about this new initiative that the governor is putting through with the shared services? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> I believe, and I am from, uh, from Franklin County, your neighbor, uh, when I was there we did a shared services plan, our, um, our county uh, did it, led it, with 19 towns, 6 villages. We are, this is what, what she's referring to is the, the, the governor wants uh, a shared services plan, which they really, you know. Which we all have. We all have. We've been, we've been doing it. They want us to put it on paper. We can show significant savings. Um, we have done that. We did it last year. I think we did it. You, ha you have to put this plan together. You have to stay <laughs> under the tax cap so you get that big rebate check in the mail. I'm sure you all yeah. received a huge rebate check. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. $46. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I won't get into that anymore. Um, so we put this, this, that's what it is. So he's extending it um, and saying that if the legislature doesn't pass this, we could possibly hold back AIM funding. AIM funding is aid to municipalities, that, which uh, Hopkinson depends on as well. That and uh, CHIPS funding are, are, are big things from the state. Uh, he's saying the legislature has to pass this, so this consolidation plan moves, moves forward. Uh, I'm totally against it. I have stated I'm against it. I think that we are sharing services in these small uh, rural communities in upstate New York as much as we can. Um, I, from my, my hometown county, we have one paver for 19 towns and six villages. Tell me how much more we can consolidate than that. We can't do it. So uh, I'm against that. It's popular with residents that say, yeah, you know, if we can follow, they we're going to save all this money. We're, we're not. Uh, what, 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 the shared services plan doesn't even call for consolid, 
really consolidating governments. That's another thing with the, with the State Department. But the Shared Services Plan, I feel, in the North Country, we're already doing it. We're doing it to the extreme. We're doing it, we're sharing services <laughs> way beyond what we can actually uh, afford to do. Mm -hmm. So so I'm against it. Um, I know uh, I spoke up uh, about it in, uh, in my conference. I've let my leaders know how I feel about it. And uh, we're pushing back on that. So it's uh, I'm, I'm on I'm completely on your side on that. It's uh, it, it just you know we've been doing it for years. We've been doing it for for years and years and years. Maybe some parts of the state of New York have uh, uh, the luxury of not doing it. I don't know, but I know I know in the North Country we're already doing it. So I don't. It's gonna it's gonna take more resources for us to do these consolidation plans to do, or shared services plans, because consolidation is probably different a little bit. Um, shared services plans takes a little a lot of your time. I know my county uh, manager in mm -hmm. my home county took up a lot of her time. <laughs> so it just adds another layer of work. It's another mandate. So yes, and then it goes um, to the people for a vote. And yes, they vote then there's going to be a referendum November 17th. Yeah. The, the part I don't get about that is um, and I can't get a clarification even from our council is let's say the legislature passes this as is and you have to do your consolidation plan which I think you had to do it last year and you did and it goes to the voters and they vote it down because the way it's going to be put in front of the voters is hey vote for saving money. Who doesn't want to vote for saving money? I mean, you're going to, a lot of communities in, in, are going to vote, you know, they're going to vote the plan, either maybe vote it down. Then it goes back up, you make changes to the plan, then it goes back up for referendum the next year, 17 and then 18. I don't understand what the consequences of it are. So my forward. understanding is that if it the way I'm reading it is that if it's voted down the first time, you have to redo your plan, yeah. bring it back up right away for another vote, which means more... But then you, you keep voting on it in 18 as well. Right. But I don't know what the consequences are of, 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 of the vote now. Because as long as we pass it in the legislature, you're still going to get your aim funding. Understand what I'm saying? I, okay, I understand what you're I don't saying, know what the consequences yeah. are. It's just going to make your town officials do more work if the residents vote it down. You know, yeah, I, yeah, I can't get clarification on what the consequences are of your, of, and, and, the, and the way the governor is presenting it is, let your residents speak, let them vote for this this shared services plan, um, but I don't know what the consequences are if you vote it down. As long as we pass the, as long as we pass the, it, it in the legislature to make you do all that extra work, right, right. you'll get your aim funded. Thank you very much. <laughs> but, but it's a double-edged sword because I don't want to pass that to make you to do make all that extra day. work because I know what because it's like. Know. I know what you're yeah. doing already. So I'm a little. We're a little. We need more answers. We're a little confused on that part of it. Um, I'm. I'm. Like I said, I think we do as much, and it calls for the county also to do the consolidation plan with the towns. The towns and the county work together. Highway is probably the biggest department in your yes. in your town. Yes. Um, they're going to, they're, they're, you're sharing enough as we, it is. We, we you can't do. share anymore. What are you going to share with the county? Do you want to share some of their social services no. expenses? No. Okay, so there's there's really no other way you're going to be able to share. So. Right. I mean, we do the county plowing now. The yeah. It's county mowing. Oh, I know. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not for that. I'm, ju I'm just getting concerned that the state just keeps taking more and more and more control mm -hmm. away from mm -hmm. And we have to stay within our two percent, but they keep, uh, they keep putting all these mandates and same with schools. It's same with the schools. Yeah. See, it's, it's bad with the school districts. Too. Mm -hmm. I agree. In terms of the same thing, uh, in terms of the renewable energy uh, threshold, the thirty mm -hmm. percent, St. Lawrence County is already a net exporter of power between our power dams on the rivers mm -hmm. and up on the St. Lawrence. We're doing our part in the renewable energy. The hydro plants are built. They're there. Mm -hmm. They've enhanced the property values of 
properties around the flows. I mean, that's, that's you know, the water is the big thing here. And that's the other thing to look at in Lowville, where they let in a big industry, uh, a multinational corporation with their wind towers. Um, they also, another corporation came and is drilling and taking millions and millions and millions of gallons of water to put in little plastic bottles. Nirvana. It's not Nirvana if they take our water. They go up in the hills, and if they disrupt our water supply, lots of us are out well. And that's another bad thing about letting in these multinational corporations that just want to use our resources. Thank you. Alright, we're going to wrap it up. I'm just curious before we leave, um, how many people are actually here this morning to talk to an elected representative uh, in opposition to the wind farms? It'd be nice to take an official count, maybe, perhaps. Um, and would the, would would you guys like to take an official count? I know I'm not in your I know I'm not in your uh, in your uh, township or your area, but it's a big problem. <laughs> yeah, and so is the one that had to leave with my toddler. Mm -hmm. Did you get a count? I how did. Many people? Thank you. Um, Sixteen. So how many people are here for anything else to talk to this gentleman um, about their concern? We came here on a yeah. Wednesday morning. I'm on, on less than 24 hours notice. Yeah. Okay. That's why most of these people are here, sir. Okay. I, I, I got the gist. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to make it a well Now you made it abundantly clear, but I, I got it. Yeah, well, opportunity to get the gist, and he's no longer in office. <laughs> You're all, my name is Beth Rosenberger. We're all scared to death that these mm -hmm. wind turbines are going to come in and just ruin our beautiful countryside that we have now. Our environment, our property values <coughs> are going to go down. It's just, it's going to, and we're, it's already ruining friendship <coughs> among neighbors and friends of their friends for <coughs> their whole life. Mm -hmm. And family. And, and health above our, everything else. And our house. Because they can't buy health. No. That's right. We already have cancer in the St. Lawrence River Valley. Thank you, Uncle. Unbelievable. Very high. And we're going to have more. It'll be worse if these turbines come in. Stray voltage in the transmission lines. Yeah. Um, some, some that were measured down in Loudville under just like collector lines after they come up from the underground. The, the um, electrical field was higher than on the 765 lines that were on outside of campus. Mm -hmm. And that's just from the turbines, right? Like I said, I thank you very much for coming out. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, thank you. Please thank get a hold of my office anytime, like we had, uh, I had mentioned at the beginning. And uh, however you feel comfortable doing that, please do. It's the mailing address. Thank, thank you. Unless it's uh, 14 minor. No, no, that was that was a campaign. Yes. Um, so. We have we have business cards. Yes, great. Our so right good. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.